What is up everybody? This is your guy Cly and welcome back to Budget Buys. And today I'm going to be taking a look at the Red Dragon Fizz. As of the recording of this video, it's the latest model from Red Dragon and it's kind of insane. This is a 60% wired mechanical keyboard with a detachable USB Type-C cable, RGB backlights, and hot swap red switches. And it squeezes all of that into a keyboard that is just slightly over $30. Like I said, it's kinda nuts. Here's hoping this is just the start of a new trend because just finding a 60% mechanical keyboard at that price point is already tricky, let alone with all of those features. Inside the box, you receive the keyboard itself, the manual, a USB 2.0 cable with an angled USB Type-C connector, a keycap puller, a key switch puller, four replacement Red Dragon red switches, and a sticker with the Red Dragon logo. Now, before I go any further with this video, I do want to talk a little bit about the colors on offer for this keyboard because it's not the standard black and white affair. While I went with the gray and white model, the main version of this keyboard you're gonna be seeing in marketing is the pink and white model. And these are the two different versions you're gonna be finding on Amazon, as well as at least the US version of the Red Dragon website. However, if AliExpress is to be believed, there's actually three more versions. So not only do you have the gray and white model I'm gonna be featuring in the video, as well as the pink and white model that I was just talking about, you have a color swapped version of both of those, as well as a black and red model. Though the black and red model only has black keycaps, which I think they kind of missed a trick on. As for the build quality of these keyboards, one of the things Red Dragon has been pushing is the fact that they are significantly lighter than a lot of the other keyboards they have on offer. And I gotta admit, even though the other Red Dragon keyboard that I own is the Anivia and being low profile is not really comparable, it is significantly lighter than pretty much every other 60% keyboard that I've reviewed so far and even some of the others that I have on hand to review in the hopefully not too distant future. Also, I really appreciate the fact that they went with a gray outer body on this white model, and if you get the pink model, it has a pink outer body. They easily could have just used one of the white keyboard bodies that they had lying around for both of these keyboards, but they did go the extra mile, and I acknowledge that. And speaking of going the extra mile, over here on the back, we have my favorite feature, feet, I swear not enough 60% keyboards have these little adjustable feet. I much prefer using my keyboards at the steeper angle. Also, while we're back here, let's go ahead and call attention to the fact that the manufacturer Red Dragon has been getting their bodies from seems to be going through their tribal tattoo phase right now. Which kind of surprised me because on the back of the Anivia, as you can see, it uses a lot of the same texturing, but even though it has the little box there, there is no tribal design. And interestingly enough, it seems EUSO has picked up their 60% shells from the same source, as evidenced by the shape of this label here, as well as the design on the feet. And they too have a tribal design, though not the same one as on the Red Dragon. Go figure. Now, as for the function layer, if you hold down the function key and press escape, that's going to be your grave key. And if you press shift while holding down function and then escape, you're going to get the tilde key. On numbers one through zero, as well as the hyphen and equals keys, you're going to have F1 through F12. On the left bracket, you're gonna have insert. The right bracket will be delete. The semicolon will be home. The apostrophe will be end. The period is page up and the forward slash is page down. Function and right alt will change your backlight setting mode where hitting M will change the backlight brightness and comma will change the backlight speed. And this time Red Dragon decided to have those as cycle keys instead of having dedicated keys for reducing and increasing both your brightness and your speed respectively. Also, when you are at the minimum and maximum settings on both of those, your right control key will flash. Holding down function and hitting W, A, S, and D will give you your arrow keys, though Sadly, holding down function and just tapping W will not toggle whether or not those are arrow keys or just letter keys. Also, I'm pleased to say that holding down function and hitting the Windows key will lock the Windows key. I am so glad to see that becoming a much more common feature 
because I have opened my start menu while gaming more times than I'd like to admit. Now, last but not least, we have the combination of function and the space key, which allows you to swap the color of your backlights. And unlike some other keyboards, you're not going to be cycling through just seven different colors, as well as maybe an RGB setting. And this is actually kind of awkward to just describe, so let's demonstrate. For that, I'm going to need my USB cable plugged into my PC off camera. And instead of using the included USB cable, I'm going to use my custom chainmail wrapped cable. So let's go ahead and plug this in. Have the backlight turn on. Turn off one of my lights. So if I hold down function and hit the space bar, every single key is going to be a different color on the gradient from red to violet. And we're even going to have the ability to choose white or rainbow again. However, my personal favorite would have to be this lime green over on W. Okay, before I start this light demo, I do want to go ahead and say that there will be flashing lights, so feel free to skip ahead. Also, while the lights are doing their thing, I'm going to take a minute to talk about the name of this keyboard because I've got some opinions. Let me go ahead and say that the name Fizz really doesn't make much sense to me when it comes to a Red Dragon keyboard. Their product names are usually a bit more mythological in nature, coming either from deities like Zeus and Hades, legendary characters like Orpheus and Pandora, or even just mythological beasts like the Griffin. They also take the occasional bit of inspiration from gaming, with names such as Dragonborn, Sniper, Hitman, and even the Anivia that I reviewed previously, since the only reference to that name I could find was a figure from League of Legends. Now, of course, there is a little bit of precedent in Red Dragon's naming conventions because they do sometimes take names just from action words or phenomena, so I guess Fizz isn't much of a stretch. You've got names like Storm, Impact, Fizz. It just seems a little odd compared to the others. And here we have the customization software for the Red Dragon Fizz, which you can download from the official Red Dragon website. Now, to those of you who have seen my Anivia review, this software might look a little familiar, but this program is not cross compatible. Red Dragon has things set up so that they have a different program per product. Now, the first feature I want to talk about is the lighting modes. And to get to that, you're going to need to click the checkbox that says lights. Here we have a drop down menu that allows you to select any of the lighting modes in the keyboard, as well as adjust the speed, brightness, and where applicable, the color. Of course, when you're changing the color of these lighting modes, you can choose any of the colors in the quick select block, as well as a custom color from the palette to the right. If you do want to choose a color from the palette or input your own RGB values manually, keep in mind that if you have all three of the values too close to each other, you're going to just end up with white LEDs. And the same can be said about every single RGB keyboard I've tested so far. Also, one feature that the Fizz has that the Anivia does not have is that there is a customizable lighting mode at the very bottom of the drop down menu. Now, for the sake of this part of the video, I'm just keeping everything at the defaults. But what this mode does is allow you to set up your own custom lighting layout, though it's not dynamic. Even better, you can set any key on the keyboard to whatever color you like in whatever pattern you want. And there's even multiple profiles for this setting. When you apply this setting, it is saved to the keyboard. So even if you unplug the Fizz from whatever computer you're currently using the software on and plug it into a computer that doesn't have the software on at all, you're still going to have this lighting mode set, at least until you change to one of the Fizz's built-in modes. Unfortunately, I haven't found a key on the Fizz to bring up the custom lighting mode, so you will need the software to set that back up. 
Now that we've covered the lighting modes, let's go ahead and click that lights checkbox yet again to go back to the previous screen. And here's where you're going to be able to customize what each key on the keyboard actually does. So let's go ahead and click this key right here. And I'm either able to change the value outright with or without modifier keys, select one of the functions from this drop down menu, or assign a macro. Now, as you can see, I don't have any macros made, so let's change that. Over here on the macro screen, you're going to right click on the left hand box and then select new macro. I don't want to have any of my delays recorded, so I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck that option and start my recording. Once I'm done typing in my macro, I click the recording button again and I'm good to go. Also, if I did want to adjust things, I can insert keystrokes and additional functions from this drop down menu. Now, once I've saved my macro, I can go back to the previous screen, select my key, select my macro from the list, and every time I hit the Q key, I'm gonna type out fart. Because as always, I'm mature. And of course, if you get tired of having your Q key type out fart, you can just hold down the function key and the escape key for three seconds in order to reset your fizz. Now let's talk about hot swap because Red Dragon does things a little bit differently than some of the other manufacturers on the market. And I find that row two is one of the easier rows to use for demonstrating hot swap. So let's go ahead and take our tab key, give it a tug. And there we have the Red Dragon switch. And as for actually pulling the switch, I'm not the biggest fan of this style of key switch puller. I find myself damaging the tabs on the switch more often than not. Instead, I'm gonna go ahead and use this much nicer model and then line things up by going right here at the bottom, go towards this tab at the top, apply a little pressure towards the base like so. I should just be able to get it right out. And here is where you're going to be seeing the main difference between Red Dragon and several other brands, because this uses sleeve style hot swap. Unlike some other manufacturers which use these kale style sockets, and as you can probably see, these are actually just slits with copper contacts on either side, whereas that is just a solid sleeve of metal. And while the kale style sockets are pretty much compatible with any switch on the market, not the same thing can be said with the sleeve style. These are really only compatible with switches that use Altimu style pins. And what I mean by that is that here on these Red Dragon switches, hopefully you can make out that both of these pins are pretty much the exact same width. Whereas on switches like this Cherry MX Green, you're going to have two different thicknesses when it comes to these pins, with this one right here being ever so slightly thicker. And even Gatoron switches have the same profile on the pins as the Cherry switches. And you know what, for completion's sake, here's an Altimu Clicky Blue, which I have also set up with sleeve style hot swap. So this, is going to be compatible with the Red Dragon, but not the other two. Of course, if you did want to use Cherry Profile pins with the sleeve style hot swap, you could just file down the pins ever so slightly to make them fit, though you would have to do that for each and every key. And that is the Red Dragon Fizz. In my opinion, it is an amazing keyboard for the price, even if the name does sound like a delicious dragon fruit based beverage. And the only real thing I would change about this besides the name, is the selection of colors on offer. Now, while I really like the gray, I gotta say, I'm not the biggest fan of the pink, and not for the reason you think. My main issue with the pink keyboard is just the fact that it's kind of overdone. It's really become the go-to color when you want to attract the quote-unquote girl gamer market. Now, this is coming from my personal experience, but I can count on one hand the number of women I know that are really into pink and also really into gaming. However, pretty much every single one of them loves purple. And that is not a color you see very often in gaming accessories. Coincidentally, on the official Red Dragon shop on AliExpress, or at least a shop that calls itself the official Red Dragon shop, they have a couple of blue and purple keycap sets done in this vein. 
both with the purple being the primary and the blue being the primary. So all they'd really need to do is get a shell made with the purple and blue as the colors here, as opposed to pink and white, gray and white, or black and red, and they're good to go. But that will require some extra hardware. So maybe make it like $5 more, maybe incentivize it by swapping out the red switches for their tactile purple switches, and maybe lean into the name Fizz by calling it something like the Berry Fizz. I don't know, I'm just spitballing here at this point. All that really matters is, like I said, I think this is an amazing keyboard for the money. And if you want to pick one up for yourself, I'm going to go ahead and leave some Amazon affiliate links down in the description below. And then say, until next time, this is your guy, Cly, signing off.